Uh, we're seeing vaping related illnesses in patients under the age of 18 down to the age of about 15 or 16. Uh, which is really unusual. Um, I think vaping has really taken off over the last several years. Um, up until about 2016, there was a reduction in the amount of teenagers using nicotine products, but that number has completely reversed and there's been an explosion of teenagers using nicotine type products, especially with vaping and e-cigarettes. I think it's easier to get a hold of. They're very inexpensive. I did a little research of my own just two nights ago and I went to a vape shop and I bought a bunch of vaping equipment, including some cartridges with some very high amounts of uh, nicotine for less than $40. So I think it's easily obtainable. Uh, I think there's a lot of things online that you can buy uh, and there's a strong black market also. I'd like them to know that anything you put in your lungs other than air is not safe. Um, a lot of these products are being you're marketed as very safe because uh, they have different kinds of oil in them. It's never safe to breathe in types of oil and have it go in your lungs. Um, a lot of them are marketed at teens with fancy flavors and things like that. Um, and that's, I think, a problem um, because they're very impressionable. Um, and nicotine is one of the most addictive substances out there. And it's been shown that most adults who are smokers started smoking under the age of 18. Uh, vaping related illnesses are usually manifested by chest pain, coughing, um, fever, um, difficulty breathing, uh, but also you can have some gastrointestinal symptoms, some abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, vomiting, any of that stuff for somebody who has been vaping within the last 90 days needs to be evaluated. My advice for parents is to discuss with your child or your teenager the dangers of vaping, uh, the dangers of even nicotine use. Um, and if parents have a hard time with the description of the problems for it, go to their doctor. Uh, go to their pediatrician or family medicine doctor and have them speak to their child about the dangers. Because sometimes when it comes from somebody else other than the parents, it makes a little bit more of an impact. Right. People think it's a healthy alternative because it's not tobacco. We know cigarettes have a lot of uh, contaminants in it, including carcinogens. Uh, but we're finding out that e-cigarettes have a lot of different products in there, or different chemicals, that can be very injurious to the lungs. Uh, like I said, only air should go in your lungs. Anything else may likely cause damage. It doesn't have the tar products that nicotine traditional products like cigarettes have. So you're avoiding some of the other aspects that might be in a traditional cigarette. But is it any healthier? Well, you get actually can get very high concentrations of nicotine, higher than a traditional cigarette, you might, uh, as well. On top of that, the solvent that it's based in, whether it be the alcohol or uh, glycerol or other things like that that might be in there, as well as the flavorings, they're heated at a very high temperature and your body also absorbs those. So there's concern right now in the scientific community that the that those substances vaped can actually also cause damage. So the numbers are still being determined by the CDC and other organizations that are kind of working in this space, uh, but we're starting to see a fair number of cases of minor, um, but also more severe injuries. Um, there's actually uh, one recent death in North Carolina attributed to this. And so we're hoping to avoid more of those, obviously. Um, but people can get very sick, um, not, just in the ho not just be hospitalized, but be on life support for these. We haven't, we've been fortunate we haven't seen such severe cases confirmed yet um, amongst my, my group, but we're still looking, on, we're on the watch. You know, vaping hasn't been around very, very long, and yet we're seeing this, this tremendous uptick in illness recently. Now, is that because something's changed in the vaping process? Like, are people adding more chemicals, making more homegrown things, or finding other additives to put in there? That's probably a part of it. There's also, like, the acceptance of people are just vaping at a high volume. 
And then the third thing is there are some people more susceptible than others, and we're just seeing that now. So it's probably a combination of factors that we're seeing this massive uptick in awareness now that we weren't paying attention to, I think, as a society earlier. It can be minor, like a coughing fit, for example, which hopefully will, will make people stop. But um, it can be, you know, like look like a regular bronchitis or more frequent bronchitis or even like an asthma or like a pneumonia. Um, you can get pretty severe, what we call lung injury, which is almost looks like a pneumonia on both your lungs and chest x-rays. So people have gotten that sick on these, on these situations from these diseases. It kind of depends whether it's just in the airways or the windpipes or whether it's actually deep in the lung tissue. We'd like to think they're reversible. In some cases, they have been proven to be reversible. There are some concerns that some do get what we call scarring, and that the scarring process may not be reversible. Um, but we're still learning. Like any, other, like any other addiction, we had to figure out, we got to show support for that person. So find out what it is that is driving them to do this, finding out what that, where that need is, um, trying to figure out whether they want to quit and try to figure out how they can help enable them. If you can't do it yourself, which most of us can't, I myself as a medical professional oftentimes seek help. So I might call a, a tobacco, tobacco cessation specialist. And in our community health programs and atrium, we have several that are quite good, um, and who are very good at counseling and supporting um, people who are addicted to nicotine. And I think it's important to be aware of it. But of course, show support for your loved one, um, be there for them, help them understand this, and help them overcome this issue.